We are here at Essence celebrating 30 years of black culture, black beauty, black glory. And I'm going to say black women. Yes. Judge Hatchet. Okay, this is behind the road. Okay, <laughs> this is what we look like. We we out in the streets today. This is behind the road. I just wanted to bask in that for for a quick second. But first of all, thank you for your voice, right? You. That, that you, thank you. use. Um, on behalf of so many of us that aren't able to thank you for the pathways i just want to give you your flowers because i don't know when i'm gonna see you again thank but, you that but means I, but a I lot to me that. i appreciate you saying that and I, I, you were here at uh, gbf talking on a panel about um mortality uh rates yes when it comes to yes uh, and it's an issue that really kind of hits close for me but i know it hits so close to you because right. you lost your daughter-in-law right I did. just 12 hours after giving birth first let me just do a sister to sister heart check how are you in this moment i am uh, stronger now uh, yeah. this has been the most difficult challenge of my life uh, to walk in with her and not come back with her um, she was more than my daughter-in-law she's more than just being married to my son she yeah. and i had just a special relationship I don't have biological daughters. She became my daughter. So as you know, in all the interviews and all the conversations, I always refer to her as my daughter. But it has been a journey. It has been a journey. It's been very difficult, um, not only my loss, but to watch a grieving son and two precious little boys yeah. that don't have a mother anymore. And so that's why I am on the battlefield. That's why I'm passionate about this work. And that's why my son has invested so much into this. You know, I was going to go into the stats with you when it comes to the numbers and yeah. black maternal um, health. And, and we should. We and should. I, yeah. Really quickly, we should, because I think people still don't know. They really don't. We talk about abortion so yeah. much in this country. That's like the battleground. But when we talk about maternal health, right? We, I don't see a whole bunch of legislation that's trying to be pushed in these plans that are coming at us. Right. Well, what's happening is that the CDC, this is not what I made up, this, yeah. is, this is research, says that black women, black and brown women, are three to four times more likely to die in childbirth than our white counterparts. Well, I don't want anybody to die. Right. But we are particularly, and that is on top of the fact that we have the worst maternal mortality rates in the entire world, which is absurd given the resources. So here is a case. She was at a world-renowned hospital. She was at Cedar sinai in mm. Los Angeles, and, and she died because basically um, they butchered her, and then they didn't go back in, and she literally hemorrhaged to death. For, they let her hemorrhage for almost 12 hours before they did anything uh, about it. And so what you know, 10 hours, 10 hours before they did anything. And so I thought, oh my God, this was just a horrible mistake that they made. And then I learned about the statistics and that this was not just an odd situation. This is what is happening to us as black women. So what does that mean in terms of where we are in this time mm -hmm. in this year, which is why I'm so forceful about people voting. The fact that we turn back the uh, Roe decision means that women don't not do not have access to decide whether they want to carry yes. a pregnancy to term. Regardless of how you feel about it personally, this ought to be that woman's decision. Absolutely. And so there are women now who will be forced to carry a pregnancy to term who might not have had access to medical care yep. adequately, might not have had the money, might not have had the resources. And so what the research is now suggesting that after Roe, we will see a 33% increase in the number of black and brown women who are dying. That is absurd. And let me tell you what's gonna really shock you and the people who are with us. 84% of all these deaths were preventable. 84%. My God. So I know you may, mm. you may have a pre-existing condition. Right. You may right. have an aneurysm, you may have a heart attack, you may have whatever. We're not talking about that. Right, We're talking right. about what should not have happened. Which should not have 84%. Happened. This is not me. This is the Center for Disease Control's number. 84% of 
of all of these maternal deaths are preventable. And it is anticipated that we may see the number get adjusted to four to five times. That hasn't happened yet, but there's been that conversation. So, so I want to end with, with that. I, I did not know that statistic as much as I read. I didn't, and that's right. something that I'm glad you said because it's real. it is on me to now go and look at that, to, to look at it, to mm -hmm. talk about it, and to amplify that. Yes, so thank you. I believe that even out of our pain, out of everything, that what helps us in also healing is to speak life. Got to speak life. And so yes. to those who are watching, yes. the husbands who have yes. been this, the yes. wives, yes. the children, the yes. aunties, the community, right. just speak a word from, of hope? from where you, I, I believe our, 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 our pain is our seat of power. I got it. I got it. Because it's not enough for us to talk about how bad the numbers are. As I talked about on the panel today, yeah. we've got to talk about what's happening. Yes. So a few things. Uh, the first time in the history of this country, the Department of Health and Human Services opened up an investigation into Cedar sinai as to why black and brown women are dying at yes. much higher rates. That has never happened before. And I give the credit to the advocates and my son, Charles Johnson, yes. through, for Cure for Moms, who's been doing an amazing work on this, right? Mm. I've been in D.C. more since Kira died than I've been in all my life. <laughs> and we love you. I'm D.C. native. <laughs> That is number one. Secondly, this is what I want to tell you, that with that investigation comes a lot of information. And what Senator Cory Booker told me right after Kira died is that until federal funding gets tied to outcomes, we are not mm. going to see a yeah. major shift in this country. And so that is huge news. Policy, yes. And I want to tell you that happened May of 2023. we got to keep our eye on that. Mm. Second thing I'm challenging the people who are watching yes. is that you got to look at what's happening in your own state yes. about Medicaid coverage. Medicaid coverage needs to be extended for 12 months postpartum. Yes. Six weeks is not enough. 53% of the women who are dying as a result of maternal mortality are dying from anywhere from four days to 12 months after they, the baby is born. See, we usually mm. think of like Kira's right case, like that this. she died like Absolutely. right there, right there. 53% wow. of these cases are after that. And so mm. that's why six weeks is not enough. Absolutely and so not. they've got to have that care on and on and on and on mm. for 12 months. So I'm challenging you, check in with your state legislatures. What is your state doing? Advocate, go to the Women's Caucus, go to the black caucus in your state, yes. go to the lawyers, go to the doctors association. We have got to change okay. that. Yes. And we got to keep our eye on the HHS investigation. And we got to vote because if we don't vote, that that uh, may be changed. The numbers will tick up. Tick up and the investigation may get pulled. Thank you so much. It is just an honor and I just love Thank your you. spirit. Thank, Thank you, you, Judge Hatchett. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank oh, Absolutely. and I'm taking maternal death cases all over the country. Come on. Because until there's accountability, there's not going to be any change. So you all can find me. I'm in Atlanta, but she I take cases finder. all over the country. Literally, find me. She outside, y'all. She's outside. So I'm fighting <laughs> these cases. I'm taking these cases. Yeah. I'm at Stuart Miller Simmons. Law firm in Atlanta, Georgia. It's easy. You can find me, 404 Law Firm.